Ahsoka season one came in like a wrecking ball and then fizzled out like fizz, like fizz, like the fizz candy. Do they still make that? Am I dating myself? I'm old. I, look, season one had me going. I was all along. It was like, this is so cool. What is happening here? Essentially, you know, live action rebels, you know, we're getting all the, where's Ezra, blah, blah, blah. All these things that, you know, matter, but they don't matter if you're not a fan of, if, of rebels or anything. But I watched it and I was like, okay, this is, this is fun. This is fun. But the two characters for me that were standouts in that show were Balin Skull and Shin Hati. They stole the show every time they were on screen. The late, great Ray Stevenson, he, he demanded your attention, his presence. I would argue some of the best acting we've gotten in Star Wars since the beginning of Star Wars. thought he was phenomenal in the role. You could tell he loved doing it as well, but just demanding the presence, demanding that you paid attention to what he was doing. And when the series ended and you found out you don't know what he was doing, I mean, look, we're going to speculate and discuss what we think he was doing, but ultimately you don't know what he was really doing, right? There was no like, they didn't definitively tell you what he was doing. And I thought that was a mistake uh, for several reasons. We won't get into that though. This We're going to keep this one a fun, a fun video to talk about these two characters that that you know that, that made me big fans of theirs uh possibly you as well if you like them let me know like subscribe do all the stuff that you're supposed to do that youtube wants you to do do all that but let me know in in the comments do you like these characters would you like to see more of these characters didn't you like about them what would you like to see expanded on them obviously what the hell was balin doing <laughs> you know what was shin you know, Shin's just left alone. Spoilers if you haven't seen it. It's a year old. If you haven't seen it, I don't know. You probably won't by now. But I want to get into it. I want to talk about these characters, possibilities, uh, and where I think they're going, what would be intriguing to make them go there. Just a light little video. Mostly I want to hear your opinions, your thoughts, your uh, your uh, your fandom on these characters. What makes them tick for you? If anything, let me know. Let's get right. Let's get right to the fun stuff. Your ambition drives you in one direction. My path lies in another. Balin and Shin were mysterious. They had distinctive powers and ambiguous motivations that have sparked numerous theories about their potential involvement in Ahsoka Season 2. Let's start to explore the characters and a lot of popular theories, theories that I have, that you might have, and see, you know, maybe one of these will stick, but ultimately probably not. They're probably clones of Palpatine, let's be honest. I'm joking. <laughs> uh, Balin Skull, of course, played by the late great Ray Stevenson, a former Jedi Knight who survived the Great Jedi Purge, but has since diverged from the Jedi path. Throughout Ahsoka, he is portrayed as a complex figure neither wholly good nor fully evil. He seeks something beyond the conventional conflicts of Jedi versus Sith, and this quest sets him apart as a unique antagonist. But what the heck is he seeking? Balin hints that he is searching for a greater power that transcends the existing structure of the galaxy. His statements suggest disillusionment with both the Jedi Order and the Empire's remnants. He often speaks about ending the cycle of conflict in the galaxy, hinting that he wants to bring about a fundamental change to the Force and the balance of power. Our presence in the Force is elusive. Balin could be pursuing ancient secrets tied to the origins of the Force itself. He could even be seeking the world between worlds, which of course is a mystical realm introduced in Star Wars Rebels that allows one to traverse time and space. He could also be searching for the Mortis gods, ancient godlike entities tied to the Force. His quest for something greater could be connected to the Mortis storyline, where the father, son, and daughter represent different aspects of the the force there is one other thing that could be possible although you know the star wars insiders and workers of star wars have debunked this many many times but he could just be a gray jedi they could actually use the gray jedi 
in this. He's a dark Jedi, but maybe he is just a gray uh, Jedi. It goes in line with that as he walks between light and dark, rejecting the, the binary moral code of both the Jedi and the Sith. Balin's philosophical musings and moral ambigu- ambiguity suggest that he may be a middle ground character searching for balance in a galaxy dominated by extremes. The second season of Ahsoka could see Balin continue his quest, potentially uncovering ancient force knowledge or artifacts that reshape the balance of power in the galaxy. His deep desire for change could make him a key figure in a larger cosmic conflict, pushing the Ahsoka storyline toward themes of destiny, the force, and fate. Of course, this is a Dave Filoni run show, all Filoni all the time. He worked very closely with George Lucas. Whatever your thoughts of Filoni are at this point, let's just curb them. He worked very closely with George Lucas, and George Lucas, if you know anything about his sequel trilogy, but where he wants start, where he wanted Star Wars to go and whatnot, it kind of goes a, an, a long line of Destiny, Force, Fate, uh, and and such as that. I mean, Star Wars is always about that, but Lucas really wanted to push push that forward. Shin Hadi, who is portrayed by Ivana Sakno, is Balin's loyal apprentice. While her master is calm and philosophical, Shin is aggressive and eager to prove herself. Shin may have been taken under Balin's wing after he found her orphaned or abandoned in the chaos following Order 66. This would explain her fierce loyalty to him, as he likely saved her and trained her in the ways of the Force. Her name, Hati, is one half of the mythological duo Hati and Skull, two wolves from Norse mythology who chase the sun and the moon. If anyone knows anything about Dave Filoni, he has a little thing for wolves. The metaphor suggests that Shin is constantly in pursuit, likely chasing power, purpose, or her place in the galaxy. She is still very much a follower, but her development in Season 2 could see her carving her own path, especially if she becomes disillusioned with Balin's broader goals or if something happens to him, very possible, or she may not even reconnect with Balin. They might be separated for good. Shin's alignment with the dark side of the forest could see her become a more traditional Sith or dark side user in future episodes. As Balin seeks knowledge and transcendence beyond light and dark, Shin's ambitions may take a different route, leading her down a darker path. In Season 2, Shin may face a pivotal choice, whether to continue following Balin's cryptic mission or to pursue her own power by fully embracing the dark side. You have no power. Shin could also become a new apprentice to a greater dark side figure, such as maybe meeting up with Grand Admiral Thrawn. If Balin's quest diverges too far from her goals, she may align with Thrawn or another remnant of the Empire to further her own ambitions. I think the most logical storyline for Balin in Season 2 is him searching for the Mortis Gods or trying to access the world between worlds. In Star Wars lore, the Mortis Gods represent the core elements of the Force. The father is balance, the daughter is light, and the son is darkness. If Balin reaches the Mortis realm, his story could have profound implications for the galaxy, potentially resetting the Force balance or bringing new cosmic threats into play. Shin Hati has a lot of growth. I think this character really resonated with fans. I probably even more, I would think Shin Hati, Balin Skull was one thing, but Shin Hati I think resonated with fans a lot more than Lucasfilm thought. So her arc in season two uh, could be greater than her, her presence in season one. Balin could be a disruptor in the forest with an ultimate goal to disrupt the balance of the forest leading to a new era. If he can access the world between worlds or the Mortis Gods, he might attempt to change the nature of the Force itself, either recreating a new balance or ending the cycle of light versus dark entirely. This could be a game changer for the entire Star Wars universe. Balin Skull and Shin Hati are pivotal to the larger narrative in Ahsoka, and their journey is far from over. As their stories unfold in Ahsoka Season 2, we're likely to see deeper exploration into the origins of the Force, and a new layer of complexity added to the ongoing conflict in the galaxy. Whether Balin's quest for knowledge succeeds or Shin embraces the dark side, these characters promise to be central to Star Wars' future, but the future is in the middle because we know where it goes. Do the roads of Balin and Shin lead to the sequels or do they lead somewhere else? Or, and this is a little tease for another video, are we resetting 
the Star Wars timeline. Let me know what you guys think of Balin and Shin and any of these theories that I just posed to you in this video in the comments down below. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Don't forget to give us a like and a subscribe. And until next time, may the force of others be with you.